Okay, and let's get this started. So, why exactly is computer RAM so important? So, computer random access memory or RAM, as we all know, it is one of the most important components uh, in determining your system's performance. So, RAM essentially gives applications a place to store and access data uh, on a short-term basis. So, it stores the information uh, on your computer, um, or rather stores the information your computer is actively using so that it can be accessed quickly. So the more programs your system is running, uh, the more RAM you're going, to, you're going to need. So the speed and performance of your system directly correlates to the amount of RAM that you have installed. So if your system has too little RAM, then it can be slow and sluggish. Uh, but on the opposite end, if you install too much of RAM, um, it basically there'll be little to no added benefit to it. So there are ways to see if your computer needs uh, more memory and to make sure you are buying memory uh, that is compatible with the other components in your system. So generally components are created to the highest standard at the time of manufacture, uh, but with the expectation that technology will continue to change. So to prevent users from inserting incompatible memory, uh, the memory modules are physically different uh, from uh, each memory technology generation. So when I say memory technology generation, uh, I essentially mean uh, you, will, you would have encountered this or you perhaps uh, will encounter it later on in your courseware, depending on where you currently are. So you will find, um, you will, you will find a section that, was, that would make mention to DDR RAM or DDR1 or or DDR2, DDR3, DDR4, uh, and as more recently, uh, the DDR5 RAM, uh, but you will encounter it a bit later on. Uh, and we will talk about a bit about DDR RAM um, a little bit uh, later on in the, um, in the webinar. So these physical differences are standard across uh, the memory, in, uh, memory industry. So one of the reasons for industry-wide standardization in memory um, is that computer makers need to know the electrical parameters and physical shape uh, of the memory that can be installed uh, in their computers. So what exactly does RAM do? So RAM allows your computer to perform many of its everyday tasks, such as loading applications, browsing the internet, um, editing a spreadsheet, or even experiencing like the latest video game. So Memory allows you to switch quickly among these tasks, remembering where you are in one task when you switch to another task. So as a rule, the, mem the more memory you have, the better. So when you turn on your computer um, and open a spreadsheet to edit it, but first check your email, you'll have used memory in several different ways. So memory is used to load and run applications, such as your spreadsheet programs, um, respond to commands, uh, such as like any edits you made in the spreadsheet or just to toggle between different uh, or multiple applications or programs, um, such as when you left the spreadsheet to check your email, that's just, just an example. So memory or RAM is almost always being actively used by your computer. So if your system is slow or unresponsive, you may need uh, a memory upgrade. So if you think you may need more memory, um, it's easy to upgrade your, your desktop or laptop RAM yourself, well, which you will find later on uh, in the second session of, of, of uh, today's webinar. So, so in a way, memory is, is like a desk. It allows you to work on a variety of projects. And the larger your desk, the more papers, folders, and tasks you can have out at one time. So you can quickly and easily access the information without going to a filing cabinet, which uh, in computer terms would be your storage drive. Um, and when you're finished with a project or leaving for the day, you can put some or all the projects in the filing cabinet for safekeeping. So your storage drive is the filing cabinet that works with your desk to track your projects. So let's also find out what exactly um, uses RAM. So RAM is used to store information that needs to be used quickly. So this means that opening many programs running various uh, processes or accessing multiple files simultaneously um, is likely to use a lot of RAM. So particularly complex programs like games or uh, design software 
uh, will use um, will use the most amount of RAM in your in your computer. So let's talk about the different form factors of uh, of RAM. So for the most part, RAM comes in two size in two sizes. So the two sizes are good. Oh, let's now let's talk about the first of which is called uh, DIM, which you'll see in the uh, in the image uh, in front of you. So DIM stands for dual inline memory module, which is found in desktops uh, and servers. And the other DIM, which is the smaller one, is called SODIM or small outline DIM, which is found in laptops and other small form factor computers. So though the two RAM form factors use the same technology and functionally work exactly the same way, you cannot mix them. So you cannot just jam a, uh, a DIM stick, which is the one you'll see at the top, uh, into a SODIM slot and vice versa. The pins and the slots do not line up. So when you are uh, buying RAM for a new computer, or if you're just upgrading the RAM on, on, your, on your laptop or computer, whichever, uh, whichever device you are using, the first thing to figure out is the form factor. Nothing else matters if the stick simply will not fit. So just as I've spoken about a bit earlier on, um, there are different RAM generations that we need to be uh, familiar with. So let's talk a bit about um, the different types of DDR RAM. So when you purchase your desktop computer um, or your laptop from wherever it is that you purchase it from, uh, you would have noticed a label stating um, it has eight gigabytes of DDR4 RAM or 16 gigabytes um, or 16 GB of DDR3 RAM. The RAM you use in your computer operates using double data rates. That is what DDR stands for. So uh, like I said, DDR stands for double data rate. And it basically, um, it means they are capable of two reads and two writes, uh, two write tasks per clock cycle. So this is what all generations have in common, but logically each new generation um, has been implementing uh, changes and improvements that make them technically very different. So let's talk about DDR, uh, DDR1 RAM or DDR as you would see in, in the image. So DDR launched in 2000. It didn't start uh, to be used until almost 2002. Uh, it operated at uh, 2.5 and 2.6 volts and its maximum density or capacity uh, was um, 128 uh, megabytes. And later on, they did expand upon it. So the highest amount of memory for DDR1 or DDR RAM would have been one gigabyte uh, with a speed of 266 uh, MTS. This is what you learn a little bit more, a little bit later on um, in, in, your, in your courseware. Um, DDR2 RAM essentially released around 2004. It ran at 1.8 volts. Um, and use 28% or, what, or rather is 28% less power uh, than DDR1 RAM. So it's much more power efficient than its, um, than its predecessor. So it has a maximum capacity, uh, so its maximum capacity rather also doubled um, to up to two gigabytes uh, per module. So logically the maximum speed also multiplied reaching 533 uh, megahertz. Now moving on to DDR3 RAM, this release, uh, the release occurred in 2007. So memory module again became uh, much more power efficient, operated at 1.35 and one, sorry, 1.35 and 1.5 volts, uh, with speed also increased uh, up until 1,066 megahertz. Um, capacity also increased, so reached up to eight gigabytes uh, of, uh, per module. And last but, last but not least, we're going to talk about DDR4 RAM. Uh, this didn't arrive until uh, later in 2014, but today it is the most widespread uh, RAM generation in, in virtually every, um, every new laptop or every new desktop computer that you purchase today is going to be using DDR4 RAM. It's pretty much become uh, standardized or the most, wide, like I said, the most, um, uh, most widespread. So again, DDR4 RAM is a much bigger improvement over the DDR3. Voltage again reduced uh, to between 1.05 and 1.2 volts, much more power efficient here yeah, if you can. Um, speed has also uh, been notably increased. And each time faster memories are released, and each time faster memories are released from the factory, um, 
but at the base speed would have been uh, well, already began at uh, 2,133 megahertz. So currently there are already 32 gigabyte RAM sticks available, which is a massive, huge increase uh, over uh, DDR1, which only had a total capacity um, of one gigabyte. So that's it for this part of, of the session. I just wanted to provide you with a bit of insight um, on just what uh, DDR, on what DDR RAM or other RAM sticks or memory modules, whichever you to, uh, prefer to call it, um, is used for. Um, and just also just to learn about uh, the importance um, of RAM, how it's used, uh, the different form factors uh, of, uh, of, of RAM. And also like just to finish off on like the different generations of DDR RAM, just to provide you with a bit of uh, insight, uh, insight into the topic of RAM. Um, and, just, and now just like the, the previous uh, webinar on, um, on motherboard, I wanted to issue a bit of a challenge to, uh, to, to, all, of you, to all of you in attendance today. So today's challenge is pretty much gonna be a, a little, it's gonna be a bit similar to, to the last uh, challenge that we had. Uh, in the motherboard webinar. So in this instance, I'm gonna give you all uh, a, few, a few minutes, maybe at least, um, let's say at most five minutes to, to answer a series of questions. So the questions will appear on your screen right now. So I've, I've basically put together three questions for you, to, uh, for you to answer, which is based on today's uh, webinar, which is also based on um, basically everything that we've, we've learned today uh, or so far up until this, uh, this point. So there's three questions in front of you. Um, there is a Q&A box that you'll find, um, you'll find within Zoom. So if you could click on the Q&A box and to just type in the correct answer. So we're gonna start at question number one. Um, it's a multiple choice question, as you can see. So if you can answer each of the questions and put it into the Q&A box, this just provides me with a bit of insight to see if um, everything that I've uh, addressed today, if you have been paying, let's say if you've been paying attention to what I've been speaking about. So I'm gonna give you all five minutes uh, to answer the three questions. I'm just gonna bring up the Q&A box so that I can have a look and you can begin to answer the questions now. So you have five minutes, it is 12.15, so you have until 12.20. Okay, so for number one, which of the following are terms used to identify memory modules? So if you are chosen option number two, you'll be correct. So a dim or dual inline memory module has pins on, on both sides of the module, um, of course, with each pin being unique. Um, so them uh, on the other hand, small outline, um, just to give a proper definition, which is small outline, uh, to a small outline dual inline memory module. Um, there's a smaller version of, of them which is used um, in, in laptops. So like with the other options available, what you'd see PETA that's um, parallel ATA um, and uh, SATA, which is serial ATA, those are storage device interfaces. Uh, AGP, that's more of a video expansion bus. So those are completely uh, incorrect. So if you chose option number two, you will be correct. So question number two, a customer needs to use several applications. Currently the computer cannot uh, keep all the necessary applications open at the same time. Which of the following components should you consider upgrading? Again, if you chose option number two, correct. So when an application is started, it's loaded into memory. So if the computer does not have sufficient memory, um, the application cannot start. So to remedy uh, the problem, add more memory to the computer. Uh, upgrading the hard disk uh, to provide additional storage, uh, essentially just provides additional storage space uh, for files. Um, option number three, which is a CPU. Uh, upgrading the CPU, uh, CPU essentially uh, executes programs uh, faster or to provide advanced uh, processing features, not necessarily what we need to, need to do in this case. Um, Upgrading the system board essentially just supports uh, new components such as newer memory modules or CPUs or different, different bus types. So number two in this instance um, is the correct answer. And lastly, number three, uh, you have just received an order of various system components from an order you placed several weeks ago. One of the components is labeled as SODIM memory. For which of the following was, the, was this memory most likely purchased? Again, if you chose option number two, laptop computers, 
that would be correct. So sodium is a compact form factor um, of them. It's typically used in smaller computers, such as laptops. So to all of you who have chosen uh, number two for each of the questions, give yourself a pat on the back. That is, uh, all three are the correct answers. And to be quite honest, from what I do see in the um, in the Q and A uh, Q and A box, each and every one of you who had answered every uh, question. All of you have received full marks. Very, very encouraging. Well done. So we're going to move on. Um, we're going to move on to the next part of the um, of the webinar, uh, which is going to be session two. And this is going to be learning about how to install um, RAM correctly into your uh, in, into your computer or onto your motherboard rather. So we're going to talk about how to install memory a memory module onto a motherboard. So. Let's begin by talking about uh, the component installation sequence. So the first thing you have to do um, is find the memory slots on the motherboard. Um, so before you start putting modules in, uh, you, have to, uh, you have to first decide um, how you're going to install the modules in the system. So let's begin with step one, which is um, locate the correct slot for uh, installing the RAM stick. So for some of you who have watched the previous um, previous webinar, you notice the image that's in front of you would look very, very similar. So in fact, it is the it is the same image. So let's talk about step one. So step one, the slots on the motherboard where you install uh, the RAM modules are, are technically called DIMM slots. So this first slot should be labeled as uh, DIMM A1 or DIMM 1 or DIMM 0. Um, it, it, it's going to be, it, it's going to differ from motherboard to motherboard um, it, and will be labeled uh, in like a very tiny writing next to the RAM slot. So if you're just installing a, a single memory module, check the small labeling uh, that's printed uh, on your actual motherboard to locate socket one for your particular board. So like I said, it could be referred to as DIMM A1 or DIMM 1 or certain motherboards will label it as being, uh, as being zero. So just check your motherboard um, for, the correct, uh, for the correct label. Or if you're still uncertain, always consult your, your motherboard manual. Always, always, always. I encourage this in the previous webinar as well. If you're not certain about anything, always consult the, uh, the manual that came with your, with your board. So a single RAM stick will almost always go into the first slot. So if you want to make sure, again, like I said, make sure you check the motherboard manual to see if it mentions anything about which socket to place um, your, your RAM stick in. So if your manual does not mention anything, just install a single RAM module in the slot that's closest to the CPU. Okay, so we're going to move on to step number two. So step two is to unlock the the, uh, the RAM slots on the on the motherboard. So before grabbing your memory, you'll need to unlock a small clip or two, depending on how many how many RAM sticks you are installing on your board. Um, so depending on the board, each memory socket will either have a single clip that you need to unlock, or there will be two clips to to unlock on either end of the socket. So to unlock the clips, very very simple. You simply push it backwards. So it may require a bit, of, uh, a bit of a push, a little bit of a firm push, but don't use too much of force in, in this case, or you're going, to, you're going to have a bad day, let's say. You're going to have a very, very bad day. So it's as simple as that, merely just pushing the clip back, and then you would have unlocked the slot on the motherboard. So the next step is to insert the RAM, uh, RAM module or modules, depending again, depending on how many you are installing. So if you haven't already done so, you can remove the RAM from, from the packaging that it came with. And if your RAM has exposed circuitry, which is the green part um, like you'd find in the, in the image on your, on your right-hand side. So um, if, it has, if it has exposed circuitry, um, only hold it by the, by the edges and don't touch the side where the circuitry is. Um, also avoid uh, touching the connector, which is the cutout or pins at the bottom of the module. But if you have a uh, RAM like the one you see on the left, which is, uh, which is covered and does not have any exposed uh, green circuitry, it's fine to hold them uh, on the sides. Uh, there's really only one way around to installing uh, RAM into, in, into a slot. So 
to know which way around uh, it is, match up the bottom connectors, uh, which again is the cutout or the pins on the RAM module uh, to the notch that you'll find uh, on, on the slot. So continuing from, uh, from step three, so once you've confirmed the proper way around, gently insert the module into the slot. So you essentially just push, uh, push the RAM stick firmly into place by pressing it, uh, pressing down on top of the module. In doing so, you might auto, it may automatically snap uh, the hinge or clip back into place. And if this happens, don't panic. It just means you've done it uh, the correct way. Um, and so uh, just to confirm uh, that the slot is, um, slot is locked, once you've installed your RAM properly, you should be able to fairly easy, uh, fairly easily rather, lock the clip or clips um, on the motherboard socket back into place. So that's if the clips didn't automatically lock itself. It just depends on, on the motherboard you are using. So now simply, now you'd simply repeat the same uh, process for any other RAM sticks uh, that you are installing. And that's pretty much it for installing memory. It's definitely one of the easiest and quickest components to install uh, on a motherboard or in a computer without a doubt. There's really nothing that can go wrong uh, with, or rather nothing that can go too wrong when installing a uh, RAM into your, uh, into your computer. And that will essentially be it for, for installing RAM. As you can see, it's so simple. It's so straightforward to installing, uh, installing RAM. Um, it's something that I always, always make mention of uh, uh, what you would have known in the previous webinar. If you're always uncertain about anything, always consult your, your motherboard manual. Uh, the manual will be, it'll be a very comprehensive manual if you're not too sure about how to install anything onto, uh, onto the board itself always check your manual and if that will be your guide uh, to installing components correctly uh, or into the, into the correct slot rather. So again, do not be afraid to, to consult your, your motherboard manual if you're not certain about, about anything. Okay, and uh, I think that will, that will wrap up uh, today's, today's session. Uh, I'd like to thank you all for, for attending uh, today's webinar. I really, really appreciate uh, each and every one of you uh, attending the, uh, the webinar today. And it was really encouraging to see so many of you um, participating in, uh, in, in today's Q&A and just putting questions uh, out there as well. I'm sure these are questions that many uh, other students as well have not, uh, or rather have been a little bit afraid to, afraid to ask. So it is great that you have put these questions forward so that I can uh, address it live and uh, in person. So, but if you do have any other, any, any more questions that you'd like to ask, if, if it's course related, or even if you need a bit of motivation about your about your studies, I do understand a lot of us. Um, you know, a lot of us are working. Um, we have family, it's our family commitments. There's so many things that's that's going on in our life. So at the end of the day, I'm here to be your tutor as well as your mentor. So if you ever need any tips about studying, uh, about your courseware, if there's certain areas that you feel um, is proving to be a bit a bit tricky, uh, you're more than welcome to to contact me. My email is listed um, on screen. Uh, just send an email to me and then we can always arrange for a call, uh, a call and then I can always get in touch with you and then we can discuss, um, we can just discuss anything about your courseware, um, including exam, exam preparation. That is something that I will have uh, in, in the future webinar. I do wanna have a, a, a webinar about uh, preparing for the uh, CompTIA exams. That is something that, that is definitely in the, um, in, in the works uh, at, at the moment. So you can expect a, a, a webinar on preparing for the actual CompTIA A plus core one uh, or core two exams. Um, that's gonna be coming very, very soon. So again, I'd like to thank you all for, for attending today's, uh, today's webinar. Um, really again, thank you all for participating in, in, the, in the Q and A. And then I will catch you all in, in the next one. Thanks guys, take care. Okay. Okay.